Hey everyone, I am Sahil Thakral. Today I'll be taking you through a journey of delivering platform as a service. Now you all must be wondering that platform in itself is a very huge thing. Companies devote time and resources to manage an entire platform. So how are we able to deliver an entire platform as a service? Just trust me on this and sit through these next 15 minutes and I'm sure you'll get all these answers. Before moving forward, I would like to introduce myself properly. I am a lead site reliability engineer at Overlooks Autos and part of their platform engineering team. And the primary reason for that is I found this, I find this platform engineering concept in general very interesting. That how we are able to solve problems which are often neglected. And some problems are not even that complex, but their impact is actually very huge. Apart from this, my interests are food. I'm a big time foodie and sports. Mughlai is my favorite cuisine, cricket, basketball, and Formula 1 are my favorite sports. So if anyone wants to discuss this as well, count me. Now let's proceed forward. So there is no set agenda here. I'm taking you through our journey and I hope that you find it informative and insightful. But let's talk about Olex Autos first. This is our vision. Revolutionize vehicle ownership globally, fueled by tech powered by trust and loved by our customers. If I have to explain it in simple words, a few years back, if someone has to buy groceries, he would go to supermarket, select the groceries, uh, pay at the counter, get them back at home, and then use them. Now they can even do that with the click of a button from the comfort of their home. They can select the groceries from the app, pay it via the app or at their doorstep, and everything will be delivered to your home. Why can't we do that for cars? This is the mindset, this is the goal that we want to achieve. And with this mindset, we are currently operating in multiple countries uh, across the globe. Some of the countries are Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, India, etc. In the next slide, I would like to show at what scale we operate. So we follow a microservice based architecture. Currently, we have 150 plus microservices in our ecosystem. We are entirely on containers and we use Kubernetes for a container orchestration. On a single production cluster, we are as of now managing more than 10,000 pods. We are currently live in three AWS regions for serving our production traffic. This is the peak throughput that we get. This is close to 500k requests per minute. Our chat system caters to around 15 million messages per day. And our DAO is close to 8 million. Let's discuss the problem statement. Till 2019, we were just into the classifieds business and we had a very well defined process around it. There were some 50 plus microservices that we were running for Classifieds platform. There was a very well defined process for rolling out features or to debug issues. But since January 2020, we ventured into the auto sector and this brought multiple scalability challenges on the technical forefront. Now let's discuss that. We were catering to multiple domains and sectors. We were managing the Classifieds platform, we were managing the autos platform, we were managing the financing platform. So we were scaling in terms of platforms and domains. We were also scaling in terms of a workforce. So with more platforms and domains, you need more people to manage those. And we were also scaling in terms of microservices as well. So earlier we used to manage some 50 plus microservices. Now we are managing more than 150. So you can see that we have come a long way in terms of microservices as well. Now let's discuss what problem areas were there because of this. The first problem area were environments. Now this is a very common problem, not just to Olex Autos, but in general. Company needs environments for their different use cases. For doing performance testing, for doing any functional testing, for performing any act migration activity, for doing any kind of experimentation, you would need an environment where you will test your changes and then you can proceed forward. But there, with finite number of environments, there is definitely a chance that the number of use cases that you are trying to solve will definitely outnumber the number of environments that you have. 
plus on top of that having finite number of environments restrict you from moving parallelly and for the same reason that uh, the number of use cases as a company that you are trying to solve and trying to innovate on top of those will definitely number outnumber the number of environments that you have so this was one of the major problems that we needed to solve another problem was service onboarding so the pace at which we were scaling and from the fact that multiple microservices were going to be introduced in our ecosystem the service onboarding process would have taken days as we realized that to scale quickly we need to reduce this time from days to minutes and the third problem was that there were a lot of segregated pieces so with the increasing number of microservices we have to ensure that the proper coding standards proper processes were being followed documentation for every microservice was getting updated and is being shared with everyone so there were many segregated pieces and for company to work in a cohesive manner all of this has to be given to everyone and should be present at a single place for everyone to consume and with these problems we realized that we need a core team a platform team to manage and to solve all of these problems and more now this was the first time that a platform team was being built at overx autos and we faced multiple hurdles the first hurdle was what kind of engineer should be added to this team now we know what qualities we needed we knew that we needed a backend guy we knew we needed someone who has a decent exposure of front end technologies we knew that we needed an infrastructure guy we knew that we needed an guy who has database knowledge we knew that we need someone who has a product centric mentality and there were some three four more qualities that we needed but jokes apart uh, so finding such a kind of candidate is very difficult so we have to figure out a solution that how can we find a guy who can be a part of this team so this is uh, so the below graph is a solution that we that worked for us and that we adopted at the starting we were a very small team we just started with four members as we think that too many cooks spoil the broth and then on we expanded as per our needs so just to explain this graph on the y axis you have the skill set on the x axis you have the work priority so at the beginning of forming a platform team what what is the first thing that you need there is a set of problems that are presented to you you need to find solutions to that you need to design solutions for that for that you need someone who is a jack of all trades you need a full stack guy who has exposure to all the technologies he might be master of one or two technologies or it could be that he is just familiar with all the technologies and he is master at none but that will also work for you because initial work the priority of the initial work is, is to design solutions and majority of work that comes to you initially is related to that, that only that you first have to design solutions you have to discuss with others that this is something that the platform team is coming up with and if they think it is good then you actually go on and build it so initially these these are the kind of guys that you need and from there on after you have developed some one or two tools there on then after that you can build on top of that after that you can segregate the task that now you this is a back end specific task for which you need a back end guy this is a front front end specific task for which you need a front end guy and so on another problem that we faced was that we know what we have to solve but what should we pick first there was a finite number of us and there were 5x or 10x more problems that we have to solve who should we ask so the answer to this question is that there is no one that you can ask for this team is formed specifically for this purpose that you can prioritize your work on your own and align your work according to the company priorities so how can we solve this so to solve this we used a technique called affinity grouping and used it with slight mod modification to prioritize our work. So the first thing that we carried out is we carried out some user researches to jot down all the problems that the end users are facing. The next step was to brainstorm around them and prioritize them based on different affinity groups. So the affinity groups will also change from company to company. These are the affinity groups that we used, and they we got to know about these affinity groups from the user researches that we did. So let's just say. Reduce time to market is one affinity group. 
So most of the problems that we were getting from our users, they need it. They were around reduced time to market. So if we built a solution for that, it will eventually reduce the time to market of a feature for our end users. Similarly, there were some other FND groups as reduced cost and observability. And we even set up proceedings for them. And they were also based on the discussions that we had with different uh, stakeholders. So based on these, we just uh, got to know that what we actually wanted to build. And after doing all that exercise, one-click environments was the first core feature that we built. So just to give you guys an idea of what are one-click environments. With the click of a single button, you will get the entire OLX Autos platform in less than 30 minutes. That is what we did with one-click environments. And that is from where we get the title. So we are, we are delivering OLX Autos platform as a service with the help of one click environments feature. What all use cases you would assume this will solve? You are not dependent on some finite number of environments. With every use case, you, with the click of a button, you can create a new environment. Once your use case is satisfied, you, with the click of a button, you can delete it. These environments are extremely configurable and extendable. You have control of all the data that is being stored in the in these environments you have control of all the code that you're running in all these environments if you want to add new services to these environments you can do that in jt so this is as i said is one of the core features which with with which we solve a lot of problems and the next slide is to give some stats on the of these environments so as of now 150 plus microservices are supported by these environments with the current infrastructure, without changing anything in our current infrastructure, 80 plus concurrent environments we can run as of now. And we did a load testing for that as well. 80 plus environments will mean some more than 8,000 pods will be running by these environments for these environments. And the average deployment time as of now for these environments is less than 90 seconds. Now, even though we release one click environments in a successful manner, but it made us realize that we had nearly scratched the surface and there are a lot of related things that we need to solve. The first problem is that we don't have much product documentation. So when we roll out this one click environment, we got an overwhelming feedback. A lot of use cases were getting solved. But even then the adoption was not that much. Not everybody was using it. So we took some feedback sessions and got to know that as tech guys, we have prepared all the tech documentation, but there was not much product documentation. There were, in our documentation, there was not any FAQ section, which created a little bit of friction for the end users for our products. Another problem was, since we didn't have a product manager, which is very much needed for any team, we were just trying to solve the immediate problems and were not taking account the bigger picture. A product manager will help us work cohesively to achieve common goals. So this was something that was missing for us. And the third thing is awareness. So having a platform engineering team is a very big cultural shift, not just for the organization, and but it is for the team itself. We were developing products, developing solutions, for end users who are just sitting right next to us, who are giving appreciation and criticism immediately. And these are nobody else, these are our co workers. So, accepting them as our end customers is something that does not have to happen overnight. So, in case of one click environments, people started giving us feedback in a very informal way. In just casual conversations, they would just give us feedback. After a time, it made us realize that. Feedback is genuine, but we are not taking them that feedback in a very professional manner. So we need to solve that problem. We need to solve. The, we need to take the feedback in a very professional manner and work on it as soon as possible. So with all the learnings that we have came till now, we set this platform engineering team goal that we are here to solve platform problems with the product approach, and enable other teams to deliver customer values faster. And with this goal in mind, we have developed multiple features as of now in less than a year's time. 
about which I'm really proud of. We have developed one-click environments, which I've already described. There's another feature called Golden Path for Service, which allows onboarding of a service onto our platform within minutes, which earlier used to take days and even weeks in some cases. Service catalog, a very common feature. It is self-explanatory, but it is a catalog of all the services of our platform, and it is a one-stop solution for any service action that you want to take. Hawka is the name of our observability tool, and it gives us a very high-level overview of the entire platform. So just to give an example, what's the uptime of the services of our platform? What, what are the donor metrics of our platform? How much is the costing of the service in our platform? What the MTT or MTT is in case an issue or in case an incident is occurred on our platform? So all these things we got get to know from Hawkeye. But building these features, eventually we realized that we are moving in us towards a segregated approach, which can create problems in future. So eventually we decided that we need an IDP, an internal developer platform of our own, where you will get to know everything about a service, everything about your platform. And this is something that we are currently working towards. Now coming to the last and the most important part, treating platform as a product. After developing all these tools and on our journey to IDP, we learned one thing, that we have to treat our products, our tools as real products. Let's understand with this an example. Let's say that I'm using AWS RDS service. And I'm facing an issue with it. What will I do? I'll try to raise a support ticket, get in touch with the customer care, and try to get this resolved. Now, even though if the issue is not getting resolved, there is someone I can talk to, there is someone who can assist me. Now, imagine that there is some other cloud provider. He is giving you very cheap rates to host your services there. But when you need to resolve an issue, there is no customer care that you can go to. So eventually, even if you have to pay a higher amount to AWS, you will definitely switch to AWS because it is reliable. There's someone who can help you with that. And this is something that we learned through our journey, that there should be ways in which your customers can approach you, they can give feedback to you, and they can actually use a product in a better way. And from those learnings, we have defined some steps that are actually needed, some actually pointers that are actually need to be taken care of when you are handling a platform engineering team. So for every, so the first point is have defined SOPs. For every user facing feature, you should have a defined SOP. So the end user knows how to reach out to you if they have. So there should be a process for that. Second one is have enough documentation, not just the thing documentation, but the product documentation, the FAQ sections, the how to use sections. All of this should be there so that the end user can use a product easily. Visibility. So let's just say my end user wants to raise a request to me, feature request to me, or he wants to report a bug to me. I have defined SOPs for that. He or she can do that but how I can make it visible to them. Is there a board where they can check the progress of that bug or that feature? Is there an SLA that I've given to them? So be very proactive with respect to them, these things and have visibility with respect to this. And last but definitely not the least is customer centricity. You have to imbibe the customer centricity culture within the platform engineering team and this comes with time because our end customers are our co-workers with which we have been working for quite some time so accepting them as our end customers is somewhat a difficult process but yes these are the ones that are actually using our products so they will be the ones who give us feedback and they'll be the ones who will appreciate our work if we have done some amazing things so with this i would like to conclude my talk i hope you found it insightful and informative and it, I hope that it, this helps you with your platform engineering journey. I'm Sahil Takral signing off. I'll be available on Slack today for any questions that you have or any topic that you want to discuss. Thanks a lot once again.